So the next question demanding we should give two ways of preparing an acid in the laboratory. The one that should always come to mind is those kind of acids that are binary in nature. That is acids made of made up of two elements. So when you have this kind of acid, you can easily just say by combination of the constant elements. Combination of constant elements. That is the hydrogen combining with the chlorine to just give us the HCl. But don't forget, hydrogen and chlorine are one of those diatomic elements. In case you have forgotten, the acronym used for the diatomic elements are the on halogens. Okay, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and the halogens that is chlorine, fluorine, bromine, uh, iodine. So when you now have this HCl to be formed, that means hydrogen, which is the atomic element, is reacting with the chlorine, which is also another diatomic element, to now give us our HCl. It's going to be HCl because hydrogen is a plus, chlorine is a minus. So when they exchange, you have that HCl. Of course, there will be a need for it to balance your reaction. So this is one way by which you can uh, prepare acids in the laboratory. Another very common method of producing acid in the laboratory is by reaction of acid and hydrates in water. The acid and hydrates are those oxides of non-metals that will react with water to give us an acidic solution. A very common example of the acid and hydrates I have CO2, I have um, NO2, I have SO2. So when this CO2, for instance, combined with water, plus H2O, I'm going to have H2CO3. Okay? Uh, SO2, when it's combined with water, you are going to have it as H2SO3. When NO2 combines with water, this will give us two different acids. We are going to have it as HNO3 and HNO2. These are ways by which acids can also be prepared in the laboratory. The next question is about the colors of indicators in a neutral, acidic, and alkaline medium. This you can always read up. For instance, well of tannin, which is an indicator, is actually colorless in a neutral solution. It is colorless in an acid, but in a base, it is now pink colored. Uh, for litmus, it is purple in a neutral medium in an acidic solution because litmus is turned from blue to red in an acid. So the color of litmus in an acidic medium is going to be red, while it's going to be blue in a basic medium. So this you can always read up. For the next question, which says, you should define what base of an acid is. That is the number of replaceable hydrogen ion in an acid. Okay, then the other one demands you should give the base of the following acids. You are given tetra oxosulfate 6 acid, tetra, tetra oxosulfate 6 acid. If you don't know the correct formula of this compound, that's going to be the origin of your problem. So, tetra oxosulfate 6 acid is tetra oxosulfate. Now, because acid is there, that's already telling you that hydrogen ion is present. Okay, what makes a substance to be an acid is the presence of hydrogen. Okay, so in that case, hydrogen is going to be present just before the compound. Hydrogen is a plus. Should the case, you cannot remember the charge of the SO4. You can easily calculate it out from the oxidation number of sulfur given in the name. So if sulfur is plus 6, oxygen is a minus 2 multiplied by 4. That should give us plus 6 minus 8, and that gives us a minus 2. So this is a 2 minus. And that is H2SO4. So the basicity, which is the number of replacing hydrogen there, is going to be 2. So the next question, which is dioxonitrate 3 acid. Di, dioxonitrate 3 acid. Acid. That means hydrogen is present, NO2 carries a minus. In the case, you can still not figure that one out. You can go through the same process where your nitrogen now is a 3. You have given nitrogen as 3. 
that will not be for oxygen that's minus two multiplied by two that gives us a minus four everything because of minus one so your acid is h n o2 and the base t will be equal to one so the next question try also carbon is four acid try also carbon four acid should be h2 co3 and the base t will be two then to the last one which is hydrochloric acid before that i have to try also phosphate five acid that's h3 po4 the base t will be three then try also sorry hydrogen chloride or hydrochloric acid that's hcl and the base t will be one all these are simple questions next question says what is neutralization neutralization is just a reaction between an acid and a base to give you salt and water only Next says you should illustrate neutralization with a balanced chemical equation. Okay, you can just pick a very common acid, pick another base, then you have your salt and water produced. So a common acid, say HCl, HCl, a common base, say sodium hydroxide. Okay, this the sodium A goes for the chlorine there. I'm going to have the compound as NaCl, that's going to be your salt. Then the hydrogen A goes for this OHA and that will give you H2O. This reaction will not require you to balance, so I really prefer this kind of reaction. But of course, you can still pick any other common acid in the base and you are still going to have your product. Say H2SO4 plus say potassium hydroxide, this will give you K2SO4. Remember, this is going to be like that because K is a plus. SO4 is a 2 minus. So when they exchange their charges, they are going to arrive at this formula. Then you have your H2O. This will require you to balance since I have two potassium A and I have just one on this other side. So if I put a 2 A, okay, then hydrogen now is four together on this side, this two and this two A. So I'll have to put a 2 here to make the equation to be balanced. It's as simple as that. The next question demands we give three physical properties of an alkali. For alkalis, generally they taste bitter, they are soapy to feel or touch, they turn red litmus part to blue, their constructed form is corrosive, and also they can serve as electrolyte. Okay, these are physical properties of alkali. Then we have to illustrate with, with equations reaction of an alkali with an acid. That is talking about neutralization reaction. So just give an acid, give an alkali. They are going to have salt and water. Don't forget, an alkali are the soluble bases, and the examples are once you have a base that's of sodium or potassium, then that's an alkali. So you can have sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. Sometimes they are given as their oxides, so it can be sodium oxide or potassium oxide. These are the alkalis we have. So the next question is to give equation to illustrate the reaction of an alkali with an ammonium salt. So this alkali now plus an ammonium salt. What do we mean by ammonium salt? Ammonium is NH4 plus. Okay, so it becomes a salt when what succeeds this NH4 plus is an anion that's not oxygen or OH. If it's oxygen or OH, that would have been the base. So I can just pick any ammonium salt, it can be ammonium chloride, it can be ammonium nitrate, it can be ammonium sulfate, any one you are comfortable with. But the simplest one is still going to be ammonium chloride, so that's NH4Cl. Now reacting with an alkali, say sodium hydroxide. So what will be formed here? We are going to have this sodium combined with this chlorine to give us our salt, sodium chloride, NaCl. Then this ammonium and this OH ordinarily should have given us NH4OH but instead this breaks apart to give us a gas which is ammonia NH3 okay then I'm going to be left with H2O so this is a reaction of an alkali with an ammonium salt the next question demands to give two uses of an alkali I'm going to leave that to you read up on the use of acids use of alkali and uses of salt these are very important at least you should know four to five uses of each of these compounds of substances mentioned next question is to explain your ph scale remember ph scale is just a scale that shows 
the concentration of hydrogen ion in a particular solution which ranges from 0 to 14 and at the middle points where you have 7 this is your pH scale and because they ask to illustrate you are expected to give something illustrating that when the value decreases from 7 then the acidity increases acidity increases okay so that means a substance of pH 0 is of higher acidity higher acidity than the substance of pH let's say our pH 6a so this is lower acidity then from 7 across to 14 the alkalinity increases alkalinity increases so that means a substance of pH 14 is more basic than one of pH 8. My illustration is to consider yourself to be at the center where you have a neutral point at 7. As you're going to your right, alkalinity is increasing like that. And as you're going to your left, the acidity is increasing in that direction. Next question says we should calculate the pH of the following solutions. We are giving 0.01. 0, 0,1 molar concentration of HCl. Okay, to find the pH, it is very important to still remember all those expressions. pH equals minus log to be stain of your hydrogen ion concentration. Okay, in this case, what we are giving for this is 0 0.01 and the acid is HCl. So HCl being an acid, we just apply this expression straight on. So the pH of your HCl is because you just a minus log to be stained. You don't have to write anything when you are typing this on your calculator. Just a minus log of then the value is 0 0.01. Then you get your answer. It should give you a positive value. Okay, the next question is to find the pH of 0 0.01 0 0.01 molar solution of sodium hydroxide. We are calculating pH again. We have to calculate the pH of this also. But remember, pH is the concentration of hydrogen ion in an acid. But what we are given now is a base. So you cannot just calculate the pH straight on like that. The first thing you have to do is to calculate the pOH. Remember, pOH is the concentration of hydrogen ion in a base or in an alkali. So now that you are given an alkali, then the first thing you can only calculate from this NOH is the pOH from which you cannot obtain your pH. So the pOH expression is also minus log to be stand of hydroxyl ion concentration. Okay, so if that is the case, you can now see our pOH equals to minus log to be stand of that value there, which is 0 0.01. Hmm? This will give us the pOH value. Let's say it is x. Okay, now to obtain our pH, it is important you remember the expression that pH plus pOH will be equal to 14. If that's not the case, you already know your pOH. So we are looking for pH, that's what we are looking for now. So the value of the pOH you have gotten, which is x, everything equals to 14. So your pH will be equal to 14 minus x and you get the value of the pH from there. Then the next question is to calculate the pH of 0 0.01 molar of H2SO4. In this particular case, you have to be very careful because yes, you are giving an acid straight on, so of course you can calculate your pH directly. But remember the value of the concentration always given in the question is always for one atom of the hydrogen ion. So you have to look at the basicity of that acid given first. This H2SO4 is diabasic, two replaceable hydrogens there. So that means the concentration value you are given must be multiplied by two. So by so doing, you are going to have your pH now to be equal to minus log to be stand of then 0 0.01 multiplied by two. 
this is what you are going to do to obtain the pH of your 0.01 molar concentration of H2SO4. So the next question, how can you describe salt? It's more like they're asking you to define what the salt is. There are substances obtained when part or all of the replaceable hydrogen ion in an acid are replaced by either a metallic ion or ammonium ion. And you can give examples. If the original acid is H2SO4, if you remove the hydrogen completely, you can have it as Na2SO4. If you remove the hydrogen partly, you can have it as NaHSO4. Okay, these are ways by which salt are formed. And common examples of salts, you can always think of sodium chloride is there, potassium chloride is there, just give any yourself. Then the next question, what is a buffer solution? A buffer solution is a solution that resists a change in pH when a small amount of an acid or a base is added to a solution. And you have to give examples of uh, a buffer solution. Just think of a weak acid or a weak base then with their corresponding salt. Take for instance, a very common weak acid is um, ethanoic acid, which is CH3COOH. Okay, now when you have this acid now, in combination with its salt, its salt is going to be maybe sodium ethanoate, potassium ethanoate, that would be maybe CH3. Remember, only the hydrogen at the end of this ethanoic acid is replaceable. So I can replace that with a metal to give me its salt. So when I have these two combinations, then the solution that will be obtained is going to be a buffer solution. Okay? You can also pick a weak base with its so it is, um, salt. Take for instance, you have aluminum hydroxide, aluminum hydroxide. With its salt, that will be an aluminum salt. It can be aluminum nitrate or aluminum, whatever aluminum salt you want to think of. Aluminum chloride is also acceptable. So when you have these two combination of a weak base and a salt, then the solution that will be obtained is also going to be a buffer solution. It's as simple as that. Next question demands to give four types of salts with specific examples. First thing is to give the types of salts. The type of salts we can have a normal salt. A salt can be normal, it can be acidic, it can be basic, it can be a double salt, it can be a complex salt. Okay. Now when do we have a normal salt? We have a normal salt when the, all the replaceable hydrogen in that acid has been replaced by a metallic ion or ammonium ion. Take for instance, you have sodium chloride, you have magnesium nitrates, you have potassium sulfates. Okay. There will be no trace of hydrogen or OH in the salt and how do you even know it's a salt in the first place you are going to have a metal at the beginning of that formula of the compound either a metal or ammonium and what is going to end it should not and must not be oxygen or oh if it is oxygen or oh then you know you have a base but if it's something else then you know you have a salt so once you know you have a salt and there is no hydrogen somewhere in between or an OH somewhere in between, then you have a normal salt. Now, when do you form an acidic salt? It is formed when you don't have sufficient base to neutralize the acid. So, meaning that the salt is still going to be having a trace of the hydrogen ion in the acid that makes that salt. So, when you are giving the examples, you can have examples like KHSO4. This hydrogen somewhere in between is already pointing at the fact that you have an acidic salt. Or you have say MGHPO4. Okay, this is also an acidic salt. But when I give NH4, let's say NO3, this hydrogen A with the NH, this hydrogen A is not pointing at acidic um, salt because ammonium is always a radical, they are together. Okay, if ammonium is going to give us an acidic salt, then I can have something like say NH4 and let's say HSO4. Now with this now I can say that this particular hydrogen A 
is making the salt to be acidic, not this hydrogen with the ammonium. Okay, for basic salt, you are going to be having a case whereby we do not have sufficient acid to neutralize the base. So that means the salt is still going to be having a trace of the ion that makes the base in that particular salt. So common example, we have something like CaOH and Cl. Then the presence of this OH here is already pointing at the fact that the salt is a basic salt because OH is what makes the substance to be basic in the first place. Now for double salt, double salt is always when you have two normal salts crystallizing together in the same solution. And it can easily be identified by having two cations at the beginning of the formula of the compound, then followed by an anion. And the two cations at the beginning is always one with a monovalent ion, then the other one with a trivalent ion. Before you now have the one with a negative ion. So what do I mean by this? A very common example is your alum. K A L S O four two. That's 12 water of crystallization there. Okay, so this potassium is a plus. This aluminum is a 3 plus. And SO4 is a 2 minus. So this is a characteristic form in which you can identify a double sort. Two cations at the beginning. The first one monovalent, the second one trivalent. And you now have an anion after. For a complex sort, you can easily identify a complex sort by a square bracket always given in the formula. And the metal that's always present in the complex sort is always a transition metal. Those metals that are not among the first 20 elements. Take for instance, you have something like Cu, say you have H2O, you have a 6, then you are now given something like Cl2. The presence of this square bracket, this square bracket here, is already an indication that you have a complex sort. Okay? Uh, let's take another instance. You have Fe, you have Cn, you have let's say four of it, and you now have so this um a magnesium on this end, Mg. Okay, this is also a complex sort because of this square bracket we are saying in it.